What's going on fam club? After one of my previous videos about running a small online Pokemon shop, Earn Collects left me a comment asking me about my experiences with fraud and chargebacks and stated it's the biggest reason why he doesn't want to get into online selling himself. Fraud and chargebacks are my biggest fear. I think about it all the time. In the beginning, I was super afraid of them because I was barely making any profit back then and a, a big loss, like a $600 sale, was really gonna set me back big time. I'm still afraid of them today, even though I'm making a little bit of money on the site, I could handle one or two and uh, still have a profit at the end of the year, but it would be soul crushing and would absolutely kill me. And it turns out today, someone is trying to commit fraud against me, so I just wanted to share that with you guys and let's get to it. When you sell on eBay, they're gonna take 13.5% of your order right off the top, but they do have a lot of seller protections in place, so I gotta commend them for that. It isn't perfect, but it's a lot better than when you go out on your own and you gotta, you gotta deal with this, and in some cases, you just gotta accept that fraud is gonna happen and you're gonna get hit with it. Uh, it's very interesting that I got asked that question and then here today, I got hit with a fraud order. Now I use Shopify and I believe Wix has something very similar to this. They have some protections in place to try to help you. Um, in this case, the order came in, it was immediately marked as a high risk of fraud and they give you a lot of deals about uh, details about it here. So I can just come in here and check out some of the fraud analysis that they give me. They're saying that characteristics of this order are similar to fraudulent orders observed in the past, that the shipping address is 873 miles from the IP address. Uh, there's a high risk internet connection. Basically, they're using a proxy server in order to place this uh, from outside of their country. And then uh, there, there were some positive things in this effect the credit card the cvv the three numbers on the back matched what they entered in they only made one payment attempt and they only tried with one credit card a lot of times when there's fraudulent they'll try different cards over and over and you'll see that and it'll get flagged in here um, and then the billing country matches where the order was placed so they used the proxy to be in the united states and then they used um you know, a United States shipping address and probably, I guess, a United States credit card. Um, so, you know, I just, if it, if it comes back high, I'm done with it. I'm not even gonna risk it, but there's even more red flags to be seen in this order. Um, I can see right off, so first off, they ordered three booster boxes of uh, Stellar Crown and all their information is here. I'm sharing it, I don't care. So the email address is jim47182 at gmail.com. The shipping address is Joe Jim. Uh, and I could tell right away with these numbers like this, this was gonna be a reshipper, kind of like using Tenzo. So somebody in some other country is placing this order and they're having it shipped to a reshipper. In this case, it's Red Pack USA Incorporated in Laredo, Texas. So right away, I knew this was a reshipper. It's going out of country. Uh, that is a huge red flag because if this person is committing fraud from another country, how am I going to go after them? I don't have their real address. Uh, I can certainly file a police report. Uh, who knows what kind of red hoops that's gonna be. I, I would definitely do it because I'm not gonna be taken advantage of, but I'd be pissed off. It would take forever for anything to happen. And in the end, I'd probably lose my money anyways. Um, I think it's bad for your business if you've got uh, chargebacks put onto your account and whatnot. And uh, it's just something that you wanna try to avoid altogether. So, you know, when you get a red flag like this, shut it down right away. So I looked up this Red Pack company and it looks like it's a reshipper that reships buy in the US and ship to Mexico. So this is gonna go to someone in Mexico. There are certainly people with great intentions that wanna buy product. You know, like myself, I buy from Japan. I have it shipped to Tenzo and it comes to me, you know, as long as I get my item, there's not gonna be any issues. 
there, there's definitely people with good intentions. You can get orders on your site that are good intentions, but it's going to be very hard to distinguish and you got to decide whether or not it's worth the risk to you. Personally, it's not worth the risk to me. And so, you know, seeing the fact that it's going to a reship or going to Mexico, if they charge me back, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. Uh, I'm just not going to bother. But there's another red flag here. Anytime I get something like this, or in fact, even if I get a good order, if it's a huge order, I'm going to do some internet sleuthing. And in this case, I'm taking this guy's email address and I just went on to the Google and I searched the email address. And what's the first thing that comes up? Something over on X, formerly known as Twitter, from Phantom Card Shop, Scammer Got Me. So I went in here, scammer got me out of hundreds. I doubt I'll win the dispute. Fellow shots, be aware, Joe Jim. He posted this back uh, on September 5th, 2024, so it wasn't really that long ago. Joe Jim, exact same email address, exact same name. They ordered $567 worth of product. This was, I'm guessing, a booster box case. Um, after they got the order, they filed a charge back. They said it was a fraudulent order. Now, Joe Jim may have stolen a credit card and that was the fraud, but, uh, Joe Jim may have also been the one to file the, the fraud charge. So either way, <laughs> you know, the odds of you getting your money back, especially if this was shipped to a reshipper is not going to be not going to be good and it's going to be a long battle now would i do it yes so in this case what are you going to do I, I i mean you're going to have to try to to give evidence to whatever credit card it tells me in here that it was ordered with a, a with a a mastercard so i'm going to have to file complaints with mastercard i'm going to have to provide every proof that i possibly can that i ship this to the guy is mastercard going to decide with me i don't know that that's a that's a big uphill battle that uh, i have yet to fight and i'm not looking forward to the day when i have to fight it uh but so it is so i you know i feel awful for phantom card shop here who got scammed out of 657 bucks they got the chargeback fee and the bank isn't very happy with them because uh, they they accepted it um, from what I hear. That's how, you know, MasterCards aren't happy with the shops because they still think that you were the fraud. They got to, you know, in, until proven wrong, side with their customer. So unfortunately, that's the way it goes. When someone buys something on eBay, you definitely have... Uh, it's a lot easier to dispute. eBay usually sides with the, the seller as long as the shipping arrived and, and everything's in place and you offer a return. And, uh, you know, if somebody doesn't like something on eBay, you got to take it back or, or you're going to risk that. And so my policy on eBay is you send it back to me as is and I'm happy with it. You don't rip the packs. You don't damage the product. Um, then I'll give you back your money. If they don't send it back, they're not getting their money back. You've done your part as a business. You've you've offered a return policy. They've sent you something. And if they don't send you something, you don't pay them back. If they send you something and you say, they here's, here's evidence that they sent me back garbage. They destroyed it. Um, most likely, you're, you're going to win the case. So in this case, what am I going to do? I'm just going to cancel the order. Um, I had this happen to me very early on when I opened the shop. Somebody ordered a case and it was very suspicious. It was going to a reshipper in Seattle. It was, it was flagged as fraud. Unfortunately, back then I learned a very expensive lesson. Um, I mean, not super expensive in the grand scheme of things, but at the time it was like my first couple weeks open uh, that I basically had it set up that when you pay me, or when you place an order, it's automatically charged to your credit card. And I didn't have any kind of review process uh, in place at that time. So like the person put in the order for $600, the, the bank charged them the $600. It was, you know, in process of coming to me. I go in and I'm like, oh, this is fraud. 
and I cancel the order. But at that point, I already took the money. So now I have to refund the money, which means Shopify is going to charge me for the, the Shopify fees no matter what. And um, I think that there was a cancellation fee as well. It cost me about 60 bucks essentially. But the upside is that if I shipped out $600 plus shipping, you know, um, from here to California, a whole booster box probably would have cost $30 in shipping. I would have been out the chargeback fees, out the shipping fees, out the product. I, I was looking at like a $700 loss instead of a $60 loss. So I just decided to accept the 60 and it made me feel sick to my stomach, but I did it anyways. And, uh, you know, it's just something that you got to deal with as a shop. It's certainly one of my biggest fears that, uh, that I'm going to get a charge back and, and lose a bunch of money. Um, you know, I'm a sensitive guy. So not only do I hate losing the money, it just, it just crushes my soul inside when, when something like that happens. So anyways, uh, I just thought I'd share, share that with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Let me know down in the comments. I hope you guys are having a great week and I'll catch you in the next video. Mm -hmm.